Hi everyone, this is Dr. Rahul Haware from the channel Ask Applying Scientific Knowledge. I welcome you in this fifth video of Rheology. If you have missed our previous four videos of Rheology, so I am giving you a link of those four videos in the description box below in order to get a continuity of this subject. So in this uh, video, we will be going to talk about what are the viscosities of various Newtonian liquids as compared to water and where in the formulation development we are using this knowledge. So let's start with that one. So what are the few examples of Newtonian liquids and their viscosities? Well, chloroform. The viscosity is 0.563. Water 1.0019 centipoise. Ethanol. It is little bit viscous than water 1.19. Olive oil 100 centipoise. Castor oil, 1000 centipoise. So castor oil's viscosity is almost 1000 times more than that of water. So it is more viscous. Olive oil, it is 100 times more than that of water. So that's why it is again more viscous. But if you compare the viscosity between olive oil and castor oil, it is 10 times more as compared to olive oil. So castor oil is extremely viscous in all these guys, isn't it? And where are you using this viscosity? Well, if you have to select the polymers, for example, and uh, based on their molecular weight and the viscosity of polymer changes based on their uh, viscosity. And if you want to choose these polymers for coating operations in tabletting, you need to find out what is the molecular weight of polymer, what is the, what will be the possible viscosity of that solution. Because you don't want to have like too much viscous solution which will not be going through the spraying guns and you will not able to coat any tablet. So that's why you are learning this, not only solid, uh, semi-solids or solutions, even in uh, solid formulations also, you need to know the knowledge of viscosity. So why in the world you are really worrying about shearing rates? And as you have seen, what Sir Isaac Newton has done, he increased the shearing stress and then he observed there is an increase in shearing rate. So he observed that one, isn't it? Shearing rate. And why you would like to observe shearing rate and where are you applying that knowledge in dosage form design? Well, look at that. If you want to pour something from bottle, how much shearing rate you need to apply? 50 second inverse. If you want to spread a lotion on your skin, how much shearing rate you need to apply? Well, it is 400 to 1000. Same with when you are levigating ointment on a slab with spatula. That much amount of shearing rate you need to apply. When you are injecting something from hypodermic syringe, you are applying 4000 second square, 4000 second inverse shearing rate. When you are squeezing nasal spray from the bottle, you need to increase the shearing rate, 20,000. And if you are processing something uh, in colloidal mill, well, it's between 10 raised to 5 to 10 raised to 6. So it's you, you need to apply too much of shearing rate, isn't it? So you need to know that that much amount of shearing rate you need to apply when you are doing these operations. And that's from, of course, Remington. And I have adopted this slide from Dr. Steiner, who was my colleague at Campbell University in North Carolina. Let's repeat one more time. What is the importance in the formulation design? And more in elaborative way, the viscosity applications, of course. Viscosity plays an important role in manufacturing or selecting the processing equipment that is used in manufacturing and package. And that's what we, we have seen, which type of package you want to use, because if it is a too much hard package and you, you have to squeeze your nasal spray, then you need to apply more shearing rate than 20,000, isn't it? So you need to understand which type of package you need to apply. Viscosity for the suspensions, if it is a less viscous, then it's easy for this biphasic system, specifically for solid, which is suspended in liquid to get separate out, isn't it? So this liquid, if it is a less viscous, it will quickly sediment. But if you increase the viscosity, isn't it? So it, these solids, they will have a lot of trouble to come down, isn't it? And that's why you need to manipulate the instead of manipulate, you need to really 
due on the viscosity of your suspension to improve its stability. Viscosity, of course, it can play a significant role in the patient's acceptance. Let me rub it out again. Patient's acceptance and in some cases may influence product efficiency. If you have to pour something, if it is too much viscous, what will happen? It's very difficult to pour, isn't it? For example, honey, after some time, it is very difficult to pour, isn't it? Now cream that runs off from the skin may not serve the intended use and lot of branded creams, for example face creams, they are very expensive as compared to unbranded creams. And if you see the ingredients of branded creams and unbranded creams, they do have exactly same ingredient. But the way they have formulated the viscosity, the consistency is completely different and that's why uh, when you have branded product, you have really different, uh, completely different experience as compared to non-branded products. I'm not saying non-branded products are not good, but a lot of times that ha this happens. With branded products, your customer satisfaction is more because they are putting a lot of efforts to make the consistency and uh, product consistency as per the uh, <clears throat> intended user's requirement and therefore they are uh, a bit expensive and injectables if it is a too viscous what will happen it will not able to come out and it's you will not able to administer through syringe and needle so you need to know the what is the viscosity of your injectables so in so uh, semi-solids and liquids you will be using this knowledge definitely and that's why you are learning uh, this Newtonian liquids and in next couple of uh, <clears throat> videos you will be learning non-Newtonian liquids. So on that note I stop my video and stay safe and stay curious. Hope to see you in the next video.